Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a wonderful day so far. So in today's video, we are going to be touching base on a few different topics. We're going to be talking about President Biden. A recent video actually surfaced online of him back in 1995 where he was actually talking about cutting benefits for Social Security and Medicare. We're going to be discussing why he wanted to do that and why that's a contrast of what he's actually wanting to do now. Also, we're going to be discussing a new story, Mr. Beast. He's a popular YouTuber. I'm sure most of you guys either follow him or have at least heard of him. Well, he recently cured 1,000 people of blindness. We're going to be touching base on that story as well. Also, we're going to be talking about the Fed meeting by the Federal Reserve today and whether or not they're going to be hiking interest rates once again and what that could mean for people like me and you. Now, before I go ahead and jump into today's video, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quickly by just hitting that like button or you can wait until the end to see if you actually like it. If you do, that just helps me out by signaling to YouTube that this video could potentially be helpful to other people like you as well. Also, if you would like to go ahead and receive up to 12 free stocks from Webull, I will go ahead and leave a link in a pinned comment below, also in the description box. Now, once you sign up and open an account with them, you'll receive the first two free stocks. Those free stocks will be valued anywhere between three to $300 each. And then if you make a deposit of any amount, even as little as one penny, you'll receive an additional four to 10 free stocks. These will be valued anywhere between $7 and as high as $3,000 each. And then once you receive those stocks, you can always sell them and transfer that money right back to your bank account. So you do have some options there already. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this video for today. So this is from Vice. Mr. Beast cured 1,000 people's blindness because society is broken. That's a interesting take on that, but obviously a very good deed by him. If you haven't watched the video, I would recommend that you do, of course, whenever you finish this video. So in a video uploaded on Sunday, YouTuber Mr. Beast announced that he was going to help 1,000 blind people see for the first time by sponsoring their cataract surgeries. It's going to be crazy, Mr. Beast says in front of an audience of applauding patients. Throughout the video, Mr. Beast's real name, Jin, Jimmy Donaldson, talks to people about their blurred eyesight before their surgery. After they emerge from the 10-minute surgery, joyful at their newfound sight, he dishes out lucrative prices like $50,000 or gifting a brand new Tesla. So another great deed by Mr. Beast. What he does is excellent. I, once again, I would recommend watching that video if you had not already. What he does on his channel is really great. He, you know, he's he gives out a lot of money to a lot of people, but in this video, it's, it's really heartwarming and seeing people see for the first time is, you know, really great to see, you know, no pun intended. Now, of course, critics of that will argue that, you know, he cured 1,000 people of blindness, but with all that money, perhaps he could have just sent another tank to Ukraine. Maybe that would have been a better deed, at least according to the U.S. government. Now, for those critics about him curing people of blindness instead of sending more tanks to Ukraine. In some other news here from CNBC, U.S. President Joe Biden told reporters he is planning to speak to President Zelensky about future military aid packages amid reports that, future, that further assistance could be announced as early as this week. We're going to talk, Biden said when asked if he had spoken to Zelensky and what he planned to tell him about future assistance requests. Two U.S. officials briefed on the matter told Reuters Tuesday that the U.S. is preparing to offer Kyiv a $2.2 billion military aid package, which is expected to include longer-range rockets for the first time as well as other munitions and weapons. So there you go. More money to Ukraine sent by President Biden and the U.S. government. And some other news, also from CNBC. <clears throat> Fed expected to slow rate hiking to a quarter point, but will stay unrelenting in inflation battles. So again, we have that meeting today. It actually started yesterday, but today around 2 p.m., they are going to be announcing whether or not they're going to be hiking interest rates once again and how much that hike will be. So the Federal Reserve is expected to raise interest rates by just a quarter point, but also likely signal it will stay vigilant in its fight against inflation, even as it reduces the size of the hikes. The Fed releases its latest rate decision Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, and Fed Chairman Jerome Powell briefs the media at 2.30 p.m. 
The expected quarter point hike follows a half percentage point increase in December and would be the smallest increase in the federal funds target rate range since the first hike of the cycle last March. The markets have been rising as investors expect the central bank might succeed in a soft landing for the economy while also snuffing out inflation sufficiently to move back to easing policy. So we can see here, since the start of the year, the markets have done really well. So if you have been investing, if you have money in 401ks or, you know, retirement accounts or just, you know, in, in you know, on Robinhood or, you know, Fidelity or any other market, you can see the S&P 500 year to date has been up 6.60%. So it's doing well. The tech stocks are doing especially well. So the NASDAQ right now is up 11.53% year to date. Tesla, if you have money in Tesla, if you're a big Tesla fan and you're investing in that year to date, you're doing very well. You're up over 60% year to date. Of course, if you had money in Tesla over the past year, you would still be down by 44%, but year to date, you're doing very, very well. The article goes on to say the Fed's rate hike Wednesday would be the eighth since last March. It would put the Fed funds target rate at 4.50% to 4.75%. That is just a half percentage point away from the Fed's estimated endpoint or terminal rate range of 5 to 5.25%. Investors will be attuned to any comments Powell makes about the economy and whether he expects it to dip into recession, as many economists forecast. The central bank has not projected a recession in its forecast, but it expects very sluggish flat growth, and it sees the unemployment rate rising sharply to 4.6% later this year from its December levels of 3.5%. The Fed is not expected to make any major changes in its policy statement when it announces the rate hike. Its last statement said that ongoing increases in the target rate range will be appropriate in order to reach a policy position that can send inflation back to 2%. So you can see here that they do plan to continue to hike interest rates until at least they get inflation back down to that 2% range. Now we can see inflation over the past months has been dropping. It reached its peak last summer at 9.1% and has since dipped all the way down to 6.5%. Now we will get to see the next report coming out in just a little bit in this month of February for what it was in January. We'll have to see whether what it is, but clearly we do have a long way to go to get that inflation rate back down to 2%. So we may continue to see rate hikes for you know many meetings to come. Now with these rate hikes, what it means for me and you is that credit card interest rates are heading to 20% on average and this article is once again from CNBC. So it says that credit card interest rates reached record highs last year, and there is still more to come in 2023. So credit card rates are now more than 19% on average, which is an all-time high after rising at the steepest annual pace ever in step with the Federal Reserve's interest rate hikes to combat inflation. So what that means for me and you, once again, higher interest rates with their credit cards, this is not financial advice, but what I'm doing is I'm making sure that I'm paying my credit cards off in full if I can, or any other debt that I have, these, or any other debt that has you know variable interest rates that will continue hiking. So you will notice on your credit card statements, your interest rates are going to continue climbing, which means if you carry a balance on your credit cards, it means that you're going to have to pay more in interest. So if you can, again, not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but make sure if you can to pay your credit card balances off in full, that way you're not accumulating more interest. Now in some other news today, President Biden and Kevin McCarthy, the House Speaker, are going to be meeting at the White House amid a debt ceiling fight. So according to Fox News, President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy will meet at the White House on Wednesday to discuss a range of issues, including ways to reach an agreement to raise the debt ceiling while satisfying both sides of the aisle. The meeting between the two is the first since McCarthy took the gavel as the Speaker of the House last month. Ahead of the meeting, the White House released a memo penned by Director of the Economic Council Brian Deese and Director of the Office of Management and Budget Shalanda Young, laying out Biden's plans for the conversation. Deason Young said Biden would pose two questions to Speaker McCarthy. So these two questions are, will the Speaker commit to the bedrock principle that the United States will never default on its financial obligations? So this is two things that they're saying that President Trump and also Reagan said that it is critical to avoid debt limit brinkmanship. 
They also said that Biden will ask McCarthy when House Republicans will release their budget and what that will entail. So those are the two questions there that they're going to be you know, asking. And of course, Kevin McCarthy got the memo and he wrote on Twitter, Mr. President, I received your staff's memo. I'm not interested in political games. I'm coming to negotiate for the American people. So it should be interesting what comes out of this meeting. Biden said he's not going to negotiate this at all. And, you know, this is these whole talks that Republicans are wanting to cut Social Security and Medicare in order to raise the debt ceiling. Of course, we have had Kevin McCarthy and other Republicans say that Social Security and Medicare should be off the table. So, you know, this is something that Kevin McCarthy and other Republicans are not wanting to do. They're not wanting to cut Social Security or Medicare. Now, interestingly enough, back in 1995, it is a long ways ago, but there is a recent video that surfaced where Joe Biden was actually advocating balancing the budget, something that he doesn't necessarily care about now, arguing that we should receive, that we should freeze all federal spending on programs like Social Security and Medicare. So he's saying in this video that when I argued that we should freeze federal spending, I meant Social Security as well. I meant Medicare and Medicare, Medicare and Medicaid. I meant veterans benefits. I meant every single solitary thing in the government. And I not only tried it once, I tried it twice. I tried it a third time and I tried it a fourth time. The truth is the last election did one thing, Biden continued. I do not know whether it really made you guys a majority party for long. I do not know. We will find out. I know one thing it did. What it did was it made sure that there was nobody left on the left in my party who, in fact, said we do not care about moving the budget towards balance. So this is obviously a different tone than what he has now. So you can see here in this video that I'm about to play, he's going to be talking about cutting Social Security benefits freezing them at least, freezing Medicare and Medicaid, and you know, proposing a balanced budget amendment in 1995. So, you know, interesting how politicians can be depending on the environment. They might be thinking one thing but doing the other. These people are all hypocrites. They do not have our back. Doesn't matter either side of the aisle. They do not care about us. They care about themselves and their family only. As long as they're making money, as long as they're doing well in life, that's all they really care about. So I'm going to go ahead and play this video and let me know what you think. When I introduced the budget freeze years ago, the liberals in my party said, it's an awful thing you're doing, Joe. You are all the programs we care about. You're freezing them. Money for the blind, the disabled, education, and so on. And my argument then is the one I make now, which is the strongest, most compelling reason to be for this, but this amendment or an amendment. And that is that if we don't do that, all the things I care most about are going to be gone. I mean, whatever happened to that old conservative discipline about paying for what you spend? I'm up for re-election this year, and I'm going to remind everybody what I did at home, which is going to cost me politically. I, when I argued that we should freeze federal spending, I meant Social Security as well. I meant Medicare and Medicaid. I meant veterans benefits. I meant every single solitary thing in the government. And I not only tried it once, I tried it twice, I tried it a third time, and I tried it a fourth time. Somebody has to tell me in here how we're going to do this hard work without dealing with any of those sacred cows. So again, a pretty interesting stance of Joe Biden back in 1995. Things sure have changed. And one thing that I've noticed, especially of Biden back in 1995, he sure seems a lot sharper than what he does today. But let me know what you think about that in the comment section below. But that's all the news that I have for today's video. So again, if you enjoyed the content of today's video and you would like to see more like it, again, I would greatly appreciate if you would give this video a like. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already, and I will see you in the next one.